Today it is time to look at the Superflux HT. I've put it into the Tronic X12 board that I built with the 30S battery. I've had that motor for well over six months now, but installation was easy because of that motor connector, so it didn't take me much time at all. All right, and off we go. So this is the HT motor. I haven't ridden this hill in about a week and the dirt is pretty loose now from all the dirt bikes going up it. So hopefully I won't skid out. The HT tire also comes with the stock Thunder, I mean, the HT motor comes with the stock Thunder tire. So it's not a great off-road tire but it worked on the Mark III, so hopefully I can make it up here too. Just have to be extra careful. Plus, I'm riding this board backwards because I was too lazy to flip around my son's um, flight fins. Okay, here, critical section. All right. Close one. No scraping going on. But we made it. Let's keep going. There you can see my speed is reported negative because I'm going backwards. But it shouldn't make any difference. How are the temperatures looking in Fahrenheit? We are in the 110s both on the controller and on the motor. And uh, if you remember, this being a 150 volt controller and the 30S battery, the, uh, the MOSFETs tend to get a little hotter than the 20S or the 24S controllers out there, but it stays still really cool and still much cooler than the GTS controller. By the way, I was impressed how easy it was to swap out the motor. And to my surprise, the motor was totally rideable even on the HS settings. So even before I did any motor redetection, I just tried it out with the settings I had from before from the Mark III, which is the equivalent of like an HS plus, so higher KV. But yeah, the HT worked even with HS settings. Probably, probably not efficient, but yeah, that's, I can see now why people come up with uh, pretty bad motor values and they feel no issues. But I suspect that there's a lot of efficiency losses when you're riding with bad motor values. All right, we're almost at the top. And as you can see, temperatures are a piece of cake. And we're going to compare that now to the temperatures that we got with the Mark III. I forgot what we got, so I can't talk about it net yet, so I'll have to voice over it. As you can see, the numbers are pretty boring. There's barely any difference between the HT temperatures and the Mark III temperatures. Sorry, this is not a very interesting video. I would show you all the log data too and compare it, but even those, everything is pretty much the same. The energy efficiency is the same, the same amount of watt hours used, and the only difference that you would see is the motor amps. Motor amps are about 20% lower on the HT compared to the Mark III, but when it comes to battery amps, power, watt hours used, all that is pretty much unchanged. So this is pretty much it. Next week I plan on taking a regular GT up this hill. Let's see how that goes.